So during the climb above 10,000 feet, now it's time 12 o'clock, you want to eat something. What was the choices you've got? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the choices I have given time. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of India's number one pilot podcast where pilots come and share their experiences with all of you. Today we have Nila and Captain Nia with us who will share their experiences. Hello. And... Hello everyone, I'm sure you've enjoyed the previous podcast and we are very excited to have more and more information shared with you and we are quite happy to do that. Hello, hello, hello. It's exciting to have these conversations. Matter of the fact, in these conversations we gain knowledge ourselves, okay? And it's an opportunity sh to share the same with you. Uh, we share our experiences of our training and uh, we get some insights from Captain Neha. It's amazing. Uh, in future, we'll be having guests on this podcast too. Okay, so we are looking forward to it. And yeah, let's let's get started. Let's see. In the previous episodes, we discussed about uh, the life of an airline pilot. And uh, we discussed pretty much what does a pilot do before the flight and we missed out on uh, what a pilot does during a flight so uh, captain neha can you please share after the cabin crew locks the door of the aircraft close the doors yeah closes the door of an aircraft and uh, you request for pushback so how does that process work yeah sure definitely so when the cabin crew closes the door that is the time when uh, there is something called as a sterile cockpit it starts okay so that is the time when you need so to wh what is a sterile cockpit if you can tell the audience all right so sterile cockpit is that where we need to be focused on our pilot duties and just talk about the relevant duties and the procedures nothing like we cannot discuss Okay, how are you? What did you do yesterday? Where did you go for dinner? All of these things we cannot yes. talk about. So in simple okay. terms, you cannot chit chat. You just focus on the flight. Yes. That's below 10,000 feet, right? That's from the time. Yes, we actually uh, start the engine till the time we go up to 10,000 feet above uh, aerodrome level. And then again, when we descend, then uh, from 10,000 feet above uh, destination aerodrome to the time you land. So that is the uh, sterile cockpit. So that is the time when uh, we are completely like we make sure that we have cross checked, you know, the entries into the uh, MCDU, which is a flight management system in that we need to cross check. So both the pilots should know that everything is correct. And then once the briefing is done, we request for pushback from the air traffic control. So once we get the pushback, so at that time, Whoever is the pilot monitoring will say that, um, you know, uh, Mumbai ground, first of all, whoever number of passengers. What's okay. a pilot monitoring? I mean, um, like, yes, absolutely. There is a pilot flying and pilot, pilot monitoring. monitoring. Yes, right? yes. So it's part of uh, what CRM and then yes. what does. Yes. So earlier the terminology was pilot flying and pilot not flying or PF and PNF. But you cannot consider the pilot not flying as not doing the duties with respect to the flight because he is also contributing towards the uh, safety and ensuring that things are performed well if in case the pilot flying is not has not done the you know correct selections on the automation or not flying as per the required uh, heading or uh, you know altitude etc so in that case pilot not flying was incorrect term which was changed to pilot monitoring so he is also the part of the you know crew because yeah absolutely it's yes. a collective job right Flight like crew, the, yes. um, um, duties are shared what yes. there are certain duties of the pilot pilot flying, flying and, and uh, pilot, pilot, pilot monitoring pilot yes mon yes so in that case when the pilot monitoring uh, while pushing back first of all have to take a change over at the busy airports you have to give the number of passengers so let's say uh, you know delhi delivery yeah what does that call look like i mean 
we know our training flight calls like we yes. would ask for uh, first we'll go with the clearance, clearance. delivery then yes, if it is yes. an IFR flight and then the clearance will issue us clearance saying that uh, whatever yes. connection 327 cleared to Stuart uh, via Victor 3 uh, maintain 4000 something yes. like that right so yeah so here it is like uh, let's say Delhi delivery Airbus 123 Person on board 180, security check completed, stand number 13, request changeover. So if you have already received the clearance, you request so for a changeover. this is after pushback, like after you have requested the this is pushback? This is before pushback. This okay. is before pushback. So you need to first take the clearance, which is so even before you, that. Yes, so first you call the clearance and then you ask for a changeover once you receive the clearance for pushback. Uh, so first of all we take the departure clearance so if these uh, major airports which are metro cities have already the SIDs which are standard instrument departures mm -hmm. so the first call that you make is to seek the clearance for that departure okay like for example departure runway 29er uh, SID Alpha Lima India 1 Charlie and you know initial cleared level is 2600 and uh, then squawk, uh, squawk, squawk, code. squawk code. So once that clearance is received, thereafter, you when you're ready, when the doors are closed and you're ready for uh, the pushback, mm -hmm. then you inform the ATC. Uh, Delhi delivery, Airbus 123, person on board 180, security check completed, request changeover. Thereafter, if in case um, there is, uh, you know, moderate traffic, he will give us changeover to the ground. And if in case there is a lot of congestion, he will ask, you know, in case, especially in uh, winter where there is a low visibility operations, which is called as IROPs, irregular operations. If there is fog, then there is a long sequence for even a changeover. Similarly, in Bombay, there is a queue in for a uh, you know changeover so when there was a lot of traffic earlier then we used to wait for 15 to 20 minutes on delivery just to get a changeover okay. right. because there used to be like already seven eight aircrafts for a departure yes the maximum number of aircrafts ahead of me was seven that's the maximum traffic i have flown yes. in right yes yes, <laughs> yes yes and and that was during and i would say a emergency situation which had happened at the airport that's oh, why the okay, traffic okay, was okay, okay. uh stagnant at the airport okay okay so i waited i guess around for 30 minutes to uh get my takeoff clearance oh, okay okay i remember those 787 clearance calls okay yes. Like if 787 calls before, like um, Sanford, right? Sanford used to have that two E uh, yes. airways, right? That no, two E there used to, to be yeah, there used to be the 787. Okay. Now, if this 787 asks for clearance right before our clearance, do you know? So the clearance delivery will speak of each waypoint starting from their departure all the way to manchester are you serious yeah it was international flight directly departing from yeah mm. okay so that clearance would legit talking time would take three to five minutes oh my god okay now on the <laughs> so obviously this guy has to say it back right Correct, like he back. has to mm -hmm, read, read back, back right yeah. he has to read it back now, if he misses anything on then the readback, again, then this thing. is happening oh again. Oh my god! So, and here we are counting money on on the running engine. Fuel, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. So, if it were so low, then it was not a problem. But <laughs> correct, 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 correct. Yeah. So every minute counts when it comes to the operations of an airline because every minute you end up consuming a lot of fuel. So. Of course, it depends on, uh, you know, aircraft to aircraft type. So if you say, you know, uh, Airbus 320, on an average, we consume around, we try to save as much as fuel as we can in the yeah. taxi. Kitna okay. deti hai. So, <laughs> 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 so the average that we get, so uh, while taxiing, obviously, you are at a idle power. So it consumes uh, quite less fuel. Like um, if we are doing both the engine taxi then it consumes about 
12 kgs per uh, you know minute so if in case you end up doing again single engine taxi then it will be Correct. better so that is these are a certain means but of course you can't uh, keep the engine shut till the time you take off you it takes time to start the engine it takes time to keep it at certain you know time to warm up because yes. you can't have I, engine started and then directly go to take off thrust mm -hmm. so that is the, the warm up time so so we now, need to calculate all now of that. there's I have heard of something called as e-taxi where the uh, taxi vehicle like taxi bot yeah, taxi yeah bot. that is a electronic or something yes. uh, taxi bot which tows the aircraft from the nose wheel that is kind yes. of fancy so that is uh, taxi bot is something which is there in certain airlines in uh, India but uh, I would there say there is taxi bot in, in India, India. Yes. Yes, yes at Delhi it has started in Delhi so uh, the taxi bot is something wherein if you do single engine taxi versus taxi bot then the amount of fuel that is saved is almost the same and the thing is you cannot have the engines not running all the way to holding point mm -hmm. because ATC wants you to be ready for departure and you can't be there Correct. at holding point without engines mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. right yeah so, so so basically uh, you get um, route clearance from the clearance delivery yeah. right and um, then you wait until you are ready for the pushback so pushback instructions are given by ground right yeah now once we get a change over to the ground so delivery you inform all hmm. the uh, you know information regarding the passengers yeah. and you have received the clearance and you now change over to the ground so for the context ground is a type of ATC clearance delivery is a type of ATC then uh, even tower is a type of ATC then there is departure okay uh, and yeah these are the frequencies on which we need to contact Correct. Correct. and they are termed as clearance delivery ground then tower, tower then departure, approach, approach yeah. then uh, departure, the departure or approach yeah, yeah. it is uh, you know sometimes mainly depending in on India. if you are arriving or departing right? e not no. really okay. even while departing in mumbai or in delhi it is the you know it is called as approach so, so we do have multiple approach frequencies like southern southern arrivals and northern arrivals yes and yes there are there are different uh, approach frequencies depending on from where you arrive uh, okay. even uh, for uh, you know especially for the major airports mm -hmm. like uh, mumbai delhi etc as well as um, if you consider you know dubai where there are uh, lots of frequencies so um, istanbul has mm -hmm too many of yeah. them so bombay has d ATS or or the normal ATS. it has the ATS, which ATS. you uh, yeah you tune okay. on to okay. the uh, ATS and you get okay so it's automated ATS. it is automated like robotic voice ATS, yeah. right okay. all all the uh, metro airports Correct. In it has i would say all the airports have where we operate okay. commercially has uh, the ATS, uh, except for the air force airports there is B viewer or broadcast viewer. You tune on to that frequency and then you get the reception of weather information on that frequency. Voice recorded weather. Voice recorded weather on yeah. your frequency. Have, we yes, used to we have, used have that. That is B yeah. yeah. yes. broadcast viewer. Yeah. Yeah. Sanford information Bravo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Other than that, so once you change over, you're with the with ground. Ground will give you pushback. So you say, uh, Delhi ground, uh, Airbus 123, stand number 15, request push back and start up. Or if in case it's a power out bay, power out bay is where there is no, you don't require push back and you can just start taxiing out Correct. from the same bay once you have started the engine. And uh, that is the power out bay. So you can, um, depending on where you're parked, you will request either push back or you will just request push back, uh, you know, start up. So uh, that is uh, how it goes. And once you receive it, thereafter, the aircraft nose wheel is connected to the, you know, ground mm -hmm. to tractor. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it is then disconnected from the rudder input because right. you the cannot push back have vehicle, the, right, yeah, right. yeah, the pushback vehicle. Yeah. And then that will uh, push back the 
aircraft in the direction which is given by the ATC or mm -hmm. in case of if it is mentioned in the mm -hmm. uh, Jepson then you have to di put your direction of the nose according to that. So once that is done thereafter um, so during the pushback engines could be started one of the engine could be started or internationally even both can be started during the pushback. So once that is done thereafter this ground engineer who is connected mm -hmm. with you on the so you are side. in communication with the ground yes, engineer yes yes okay because he has to tell you that whether area is clear to start the engines or not absolutely so he will ensure that uh, there is everything is clear to start the engine and then you clear or uh, then you start the Correct. engine so you are there in communication with the ground engineer and then once uh, he is disconnected once you inform him yes that engines are started successfully and now he is out mm -hmm. so then he will say okay bye bye and then you can quest for a taxi Correct. so uh, that's of course there is a call out for that mm -hmm. you know uh, to like clear to disconnect Correct. and signals Correct. So Correct. on which your side if he has to go to the left, then left or right. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, that's uh, about the disconnect. Yeah, the the marshalling. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, I remember this uh, now. So we started doing solos, right? And we never had to actually do the uh, marshal signals, like follow the marshal signals at Sanford, because we know the taxiway, we know the parking ra uh, uh, parking uh, area ramp. That is at the yeah. time of docking mm -hmm. in, right? Yeah, docking in. So so docking in. Okay. So uh, basically, there is movement area and non-movement area, right? Mm -hmm. So, so movement area. Once you get to it, you can navigate yourself, right? Like just, just go to the, uh, the ramp and park. That right? is that is for you. Uh, for yeah. us, we when we go to the different mm. places, you really yes. have to look at the chart, yeah. and so then you really have to. So when know we when so we had actually studied um, the marshalling signals, okay all of those mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but actually never followed those now for the first time we go on a solo cross country <laughs> okay huh. and there is five private jets on this side five private jets on this side okay, okay. and as we exit the taxiway basically we exit on the taxiway okay on the taxiway there is a marshal vehicle that comes hmm. i was like oh this is fancy mm -hmm. okay then follow I'm following. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, follow, follow me. me follow, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Okay. Haan. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm following. Okay. Now he breaks out. And then there is a m person who's marshalling. Okay. Saying this. I was like, what, what was is this? <laughs> I guess it's to the right. To the left. <laughs> <laughs> to the left. Okay. So, yeah, basically the moving hand. Uh, okay. Haan. So, so to that side. Because I had studied, hmm. but never when Used you do it for the first time. <laughs> okay. Uh. And then I did it. And uh, he was like, welcome to Stuart. Hmm. I was like, yeah, you did the right job, I guess. <laughs> 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 and then I, when, when I went to the FBO, FBO is basically uh, the fixed based operations that mm -hmm. we used to go to fancy FBOs. Like, legit. Even whether you go to FBO with a Cessna or hmm. you go with a private jet, mm -hmm -hmm. yeah, the infrastructure is the same. The you get, get amazing it. treatment and, and stuff. It's amazing. Okay, so then I took out my iPad and revised through the marshalling signals. Okay, <laughs> okay, this is how it is done. Okay, first time I did not mess up good, but know all the marshalling signals <laughs> really well. Okay. Because you must be following the marshalling signals pretty For much docking. every day, right? Yeah, every yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. Or VDGS, if that yeah. bay is installed with yeah. the VDGS. Yeah. So so this Visual. is hmm. move to the hmm. moving hmm. hand. Okay. This is... Move <laughs> to the right. Yeah, huh. yeah, move totally. to the right. So. Yeah, and um, yeah, then there are many others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> VDGS is uh, basically visual docking guidance system. Mm -hmm. So whereas uh, where we fly to all these um, major international airports, mm -hmm. there is uh, even the domestic airports mm -hmm. for that matter nowadays, it is installed with the VDGS. Mm -hmm. There, the aircraft type that you are going to dock into mm -hmm. that will be designated on that. Correct. And it will uh, guide you to full stop. So it tells you whether 
to go to left or right mm-hmm. and how many meters you are there to stop correct so you need to be like stopped when it touches zero so zero you won't be able to see because it says stop mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so depending on your speed you anticipate when to apply the final break correct the moment you if you exceed that final mm-hmm. stop line mm-hmm. the push back tractor has to tow you back otherwise door cannot connect to the aero bridge right so this is a penalty if you do it at international airport i could i could even even, even in domestic Imagine. airport i mean honestly they have the to do the job twice if the nose wheel goes ahead of the parking line they used to like get out the get out of the plane and just push the aircraft <laughs> <back> <laughs> <laughs> no the the Cessna is light right we used yes. to like uh, even push back ourselves like yes. with the uh, park and and uh, do you know about this Atlantic FBO at Stuart like yeah, they had yeah, this was, uh, screen was. on the pilot's launch and they had our name and the aircraft tail yeah. number and okay. estimated and time of arrival and, and how much fuel will be buying from them yes oh okay yeah, okay yeah So they had this very advanced system okay, like okay, they connected okay, okay. everything. It was really fancy. Yes. And but for the first time when you are parking a Cessna which is owned by your flight school. Okay. Okay, you are comfortable with Cessna over a period of time like when correct. you get released correct, solo correct, correct. after your instrument and correct, everything. Correct. Yeah, you are comfortable with Cessna. Correct, correct. But still you know that you are carrying uh, an expensive equipment. Correct. the pressure above that is that you have a 40 million private jet parked right <laughs> there okay and you are parking besides that <laughs> okay to. though you know that there is a gap between your wings okay <laughs> when he is marshaling you okay and you are doing it for the first time <laughs> okay you know that that okay it's all right because if he is marshaling you then he is maintaining the space from mm. the mm-hmm. wing mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. but the pressure is something real <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and the parking space would be crammed up like literally i have waited for like 5 to 10 minutes to get a parking slot at an fbo yeah. okay 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 i see you are also like often we end up parking in between the two aircrafts which is very common but uh, yes we really need to be very very careful there are instances which have happened where in there have been wing tip strike with the other aircrafts with i mean other pilots it has happened in you know in various airlines so yeah that uh, needs to be really taken care of because any wing yeah, tip strike yeah it's all situational it is, awareness right i mean it is uh, when you are flying this big aircraft you really cannot judge the uh, la- longitudinal distance mm mm-hmm. and the wingtip clearance so it is advised that there has to be someone to on left and right if there you're parking in the middle of the two aircrafts to make sure that there is a sufficient clearance so if you follow the in case of vdgs if you follow that yes it will ensure that this aircraft wings are of that size and yes there will be adequate clearance but if there is a marshaler he can there need to be Correct. you know two people to tell him that yes it is clear and he has to Correct. be and it's only visual communication yes, right yes. it's not an audio communication no, 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 it's only no visual problem. communication mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. like the signals yes, that's yes, right yes. yeah so all right yep i mean then basically the push back and then now you start taxing now it has happened while taxing out also it is very important that you say you know by to the engineer and then he is giving thumbs up for you to go now there are instances where the technician got stuck in the engine while taxing out yeah so it is required that uh, you get the thumbs up and this is very very serious matter otherwise mm-hmm. it's a uh, hazard to you know mankind yeah human errors right yes yes so uh, there should not be any rush okay i will go ahead of this aircraft i will go ahead of that aircraft and mm. because of that the requesting of the taxi should not yeah, be rushed yeah that's when we repeatedly you know? talk about um, attitude right 
like certain hazardous attitudes like uh, mm. like being, rushing being macho being mm. rushing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and then uh, it is important that you fly to various airports where you might be where there will be complex taxiways and it's extremely important that you are um, aware wherever you are turning and uh, the taxi rate route that you're following so once the pilot monitoring takes the taxi clearance it is mandatory that the pilot flying is uh, you know knowing and repeating that clearance well and following it really well otherwise one taxi way incursion can lead to a report filed against you even whenever there is a taxi way incursion if you get into some wrong taxi way which is closed but there is no sign board over there which can happen at times yes then there could be you know gravels or there could be uh, certain construction material would be there and it has led to tire bursts also so such thing needs to be avoided at avoided as in it is absolutely not acceptable so taxi way incursions if you think okay it's just one wrong taxi way but if it is closed and if it is under no tam it needs to be really highlighted and yeah and even the taxi way has to be um for that particular type of aircraft right i mean that taxi way has to accommodate yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. wingspan that depends on the wingspan yeah, and correct. like yeah. we used to fly to uh which one was that um that had very narrow taxi way that apopka apopka yeah so apopka had a hill on either side okay and so if you are taking a diamond and maintaining a center line on that taxi way the wing would hit the hill mm-hmm. okay so mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. kind of that so you've got to maintain on either side of the taxi way or not go with a diamond there correct, at correct, all correct 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 and the runway is also not kind of level it's like yeah <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. yeah it's uh-huh. yeah. so there was this tortoise which was on the taxi way and i was <laughs> texting right <laughs> so uh, and it was my i guess third or fourth solo release so i just stopped my aircraft and i was waiting for it to like cross the taxi way hmm. and then it is is like uh why did you stop i am like uh, there's a tortoise in front of me uh-huh. so i'm just waiting for it to clear <laughs> the taxi way for me there's like okay <laughs> turn okay. along there yeah yeah, <laughs> <turtle along there. laughs> yeah it's it's called there. what ford right for an object debris fod mm-hmm. fod mm-hmm. so that's that's what it is that's about taxing that's about taxing and then after you reach the holding point of course that is also one of the you know point where you need to be extra vigilant so if in case there is some uh, other runway in use which is generally in use like for example in mumbai if there is runway 0927 in use which is commonly used runway runway 27 whereas if you are taxiing and that day runway 14 is in use then you have to be extra cautious and extra careful because you are normally used to doing the taxi as per the runway which is normally used but when there is other runway then taxi routing changes so you need to be careful that you Correct. are now going to you know cross the active runway while taxiing so such things yeah. need to be really uh, yeah, taken yeah like having having all the take account. off lights on and having both the engines on is basic yeah, for is for basic tra- tax uh, yes, taxiing yes, on yes. runway right yeah yeah So uh, that is something which needs to be taken into account. Like there yeah. was which one we used to uh, taxi way here and then we used to cross the runway 18 so just for crossing runway 18 we would uh, start strobe lights and and yes. everything yeah, right. Yeah yeah just like for the, crossing yeah, strobe yeah, needs yeah, to yeah, be on yeah. yeah yeah that's right. Then uh, of course uh, every clearance after that once you are on tar frequency needs to be very crisp and clear and should not be taken for granted at all. Because if you know the major no atc communication has to be taken, taken for, for granted yeah. or like to be assumed i would say yeah, yeah. not even yes. one so word or one again, letter but... or one number needs to she can be assumed because as long as because there are a lot of similar call signs in such busy air spaces so you need you only need to l- listen to your aircraft call sign when you are communicating and uh, acknowledging the clearance because um 
if you know the the most dangerous air crash was between two seven four sevens, and there yeah. there was a Banana our team miscommunication. Tenerif, right? Tenerif, yes. Tenerif, yes. That was KLM the and yeah, ground. Uh, Saying, right? like that was the time when airport surface movement radars were was there or was no, no, not the weather there. was uh, IMC I guess there was fog because of which the other aircraft which was asked to taxi you know a uh, backtrack for vacation that aircraft was taxiing in whereas this KLM was not given the clearance for takeoff and uh, your not cleared for takeoff was stepped up by the other aircraft and Correct. that was you know in rush it was assumed as you're cleared for takeoff and then it ha- ended up having a Correct. you know two aircraft colliding on the runway so that is something which really needs to be avoided and should not be taken yeah especially in the busy assume that certain clearance right. Unless you are really, really sure about it. So what did tortoise do? The tortoise has crossed the taxi way. And then I proceeded. How much money did you get to cross the tortoise? It was solo, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it was solo. Okay. In a dual flight, it was solo. Yeah, it was solo. It was solo. In a dual flight and training flight, so you're counting every minute almost. Like yes. Not, not while in the air because you're completely focused on, on the flight and, and performing the duties. But while on the ground and you're just sitting idle at one point. Yeah. <laughs> so in dual flight, they meant to say that they end up paying. to the instructor so that is the extra charge not instructor it says the hours is that the we hourly yeah, charges yeah, yeah, which yeah, end up yeah. increasing than a solo flight because solo flight they have to do hour building anyways they have to increase the number of hours yeah. so that's the i reason. mean all all our most of our instructors were really good so they are friends of ours so <laughs> <laughs> thank you all our instructors <laughs> for training us Yeah. So, no. all right. Then the once you get take yeah, off the clearance, the take the off clearance. Yeah, the the tortoise is crossed. Okay, the tortoise is <laughs> crossed <laughs> the 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 taxiway. <laughs> Now, you hold short of the runway. Okay, yeah, and um, so you were taxiing back, right? And so so you you take off. Now the climb still you are into the sterile cockpit, correct? Yes. all the way up to so you get the climb instructions then you follow the said and yes. and then you are um en route for the destination correct yes yes yeah so during the climb above 10000 feet now it's time 12 o'clock you want to eat something what was the choices you've got oh <laughs> 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 the choices at one given time you can have either of indian food you can have chinese food So you oh. pre pre book the meals like we do in no, as passengers. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, we have a preset meal for that day, which is already there. Okay, set. that's a crew m- meal set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Unless if you are like working for some full service carrier, then in that case there is an option where there is a dessert. Even we get dessert. We have a salad. We have. sabzi we have roti we have rice we have a non veg dish then there is even a dessert and uh, yeah that is there as well as you have some munchies if you want to munch on mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah like dry fruits or you want corn flakes or you want some you know um nutties etc so you finish the meal like every time like because because i mean so much to eat and pilots have to maintain their fitness as well you are talking about sweets here okay mm. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yes i have a very bad sweet tooth mm. yes i do eat a uh, bit you know small portion of it okay. in proportion so Controlled. of course not every day yeah and she works out too i mean i mm. don't really work out as much as much as i should it is important and you feel good you look good you feel good about yourself you feel much fresh and you feel confident and uh, that's what you know makes me going and uh, this is uh, one of the thing which is even required for yourself to be fit as a pilot so it is very important healthy mind 
lives in a healthy body so Correct. that is the reason it is good if you work out and keep yourself up in fit every time yes so as as a pilot how often do you recommend to work out about 4 to 5 times a week even if you work out it's absolutely good so one day weights one day cardio is great like uh, you know like in a not week not intense just basic 45 minutes to one hour workout or yeah basically i guess her idea of working out is just to sweat so that there is some physical activity like get yes. the heart rate up and yes, yes. Uh, that's it so one day you do you know if you consider weights then one day upper body then next day cardio then next day legs then next day cardio all right so like that you can shall i write down it? the workout schedule yes <laughs> you should <laughs> yeah so okay. that way a week should be good uh, yeah. my my honestly weight management and everything i'm i'm good at it i think uh, yeah i'm good at it mm-hmm. but that's by the means of maintaining a proper diet like disciplined diet that's that's what i do workout uh, i haven't been very consistent with it but my day to day activity does include movement like physical movement so yeah that checks out and i do only one meal in a day so i don't so gain weight so i have a sweet tooth so that i can cheat a little bit there by working <laughs> out so <laughs> by burning some calories there and then little bit of sweet is okay yeah. if you yeah, now, are so now the exercise fond of. yeah yep. sure you are fond of yes. right <laughs> if you are fond of sweets you can have and afford to have a bit of it yes and sweat so it out in the gym yes yes yeah, yes there, there, there of course not much but yeah hey bro yeah you want it sweet you right? dropped something no <laughs> what <laughs> now i already <laughs> had one i had one <laughs> i had one thoda thoda na rakh da is yes, basically i i also i like to work out and i also like to play sports so either i work out or play sports on any given day and we used to play tennis back in yeah. the states like every yeah, day yeah at oh, night nice. yeah at night we used to turn on the lights and we used to play till like late midnight and tennis then table tennis no lawn tennis lawn, lawn tennis, tennis. Yes. is it yeah. yes yeah, really and we can we can try that out here someday yeah. yes and we used to like uh, fly the drone over the lawn and we used to record oh, us no. is <laughs> it play. Yeah. you should yeah. show that recording here <laughs> yeah check out yep, the yep, profile yep. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yep Yeah, yeah it's uh, fun. one of our instructors gave us the the drone pilot certification as well. So we oh, are wow. yeah licensed to fly a drone. Yeah, so would like to know about drone yeah. uh, pilot um, license. Yeah, drone pilot license. Okay. So uh, as long as you have a pilot's license in the US, okay? Uh only one instructor has to certify you as uh, a drone pilot. Okay. okay and your drone has to be registered with FAA okay once you have that yes you do get a drone a drone pilot license now even in india the drone pilot license is there and it is authorized to fly drones if uh, their weight is less than 1.5 kg so that is authorized legally if you have that particular uh, you know certification so there is a small exam for that and uh, yes correct let's try it <laughs> yes we'll definitely give <laughs> that exam and <laughs> get the indian drone pilot license yep absolutely so um basically the diet then the um uh, workout and then you have sleep correct yes you always make sure that you sleep well, well rested well rested before the flight yeah yeah how much are busy as your schedule okay definitely yeah so I see you eating sweets but at the same time yeah you make sure to burn it all out in the gym like you don't miss it then you would sleep right uh, before basically you would maintain enough rest before every flight no matter what whoever is having party whoever is yes, doing what yes, she'll yes. be like I'm out she'll be like I'm I'm out I'm I'm done yes. okay no matter what okay if she has a flight tomorrow she won't just 
even touch alcohol like there is no no way absolutely okay. not and It's yeah i mean absolutely your license is actually yes stake. definitely cannot... okay like not even a taste a drop okay she'll be out like say if her uh, reporting is at so and so minus the traveling time whenever the taxi uh, is going to pick her up her wake up time minus 8 hours she'll be just dozed off doesn't mm-hmm. matter so yeah. speaking yeah. about the sleep and the flying part i have generally heard from people that pilots do not spend much time with their families they don't have enough time for their hobbies so uh, what do you think about work life balance as a pilot yeah in the free time when i have off when i have uh, you know uh, whatever is depending on the weekly off or i make sure that yes i am well rested in that time whatever time is left then yes i do teach for cpl and atpl yes at cnt double a so that yep. is something which uh, keeps me going and yes i love to do that love to interact with students love to teach and deliver the most effective means of learning for cpl and atpl you know studies and that is something which i really enjoy as well and flying yes flying is amazing i always look forward to flying every day every procedure that i do in the cockpit is i make sure that it is effective it is efficient and it really is safe so that is something which really gives me happiness and uh, yeah what about family time like apart from this things which you mentioned like teaching so how often do you get to spend time with your family yes whenever uh, i am home that time i do get to spend time with uh, family parents like brother. right now yes <laughs> like right now <laughs> i have all so we family yeah. and friends <laughs> that's what we are right yes 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 as you mentioned work life balance so one of the decisions that uh, when i chose to become a pilot i believe and i that's that's my belief okay that um, work and life are not two separate things i feel work is part of your life right so one third of our life say 24 hours is uh, is what we have in a day 8 hours we sleep 8 hours we work right at least for the least okay so one third of our life is spent at work so my you might as well you enjoy it right so i don't really tend to separate work and life make work enjoyable and the occupational enjoyment like imagine when we used to fly right we used to fly cessna and yes it was fun like yeah it was it, it was it fun it never felt like we were going to do something yeah. like we felt it go while going to school or engineering colleges like we Try. are going to do something which we do not love right as a student we used to go to flight school and uh, like 5 to 6 hours like we don't know where it went it, it was so much fun exactly. flying the plane exactly like it never felt like we are training or we are working everything gets tuned automatically yeah definitely there is a learning curve but then that's what we enjoy right like in the moment of being in work it is it is one of the most joyous moments and i believe that is what it is about pilot profession that unless we don't enjoy that work the work demands a lot from from correct, us correct 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 definitely like yes on just imagine a person who uh is doing a 9 to 5 job okay N- i'm not i'm not looking down at the person who does it it's great okay like n- they serve so many needs of the world okay so that's amazing first of all okay but can you imagine a daily uh employee who's an employee let's take an example uh an employee of a bank who reports at his work at 9 o'clock in the morning and punches out at 6 o'clock in the evening okay or 5 o'clock in the evening 
if you ask that person to wake up at two o'clock in the morning and show up at work what will be his level of willingness to do it very less right unlikely right honestly speaking nobody wants to work at three o'clock in the morning but that trade off as pilots we take for one thing that we enjoy doing it yes it's yes. like it's like a person would wake up for a flight to say switzerland at two o'clock in the morning but the same person would not probably wake up uh to show up at a bank right so the same bank employee okay won't wake up at two o'clock to to show up at his job in a bank as a cashier okay but the same employee if he has a switzerland trip planned would wake up at two o'clock to go to switzerland to catch his flight right so is the level of excitement towards it so i believe as pilots um if a pilot doesn't enjoy the occupation itself then balancing the uh work life balance so called whatever it is it becomes uh, way more difficult because i've seen you you enjoy flying right yes. so and and at 2 o'clock in the morning 3 o'clock in the morning should be up and going like <laughs> n- i haven't heard her like cribbing about it ever like 3 o'clock in the morning yeah, I'm, i'm ready let's let's do this <laughs> okay i'm going here there i'm <laughs> like okay all right let me sleep <laughs> because i haven't started flying yet when we start flying yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's that's what yeah. like we used to wake up for our flights at 4 o'clock in the morning yes. 3 o'clock in the morning right yes so it I didn't seem like uh too hectic for us like yeah like we used to sleep in early oh, yeah. and 4 uh, 4 a.m we would like wake up and it would be normal for us like we would be excited to go correct, for correct, our flight correct, and stuff correct correct I mean I am told every other day wherever I am done with the flight you don't look as if you're done with the flight you but the moment I hit the bed I am exhausted yes correct but till the time I am in that uniform I am as charged as if you know I am still there in uh, that uh, we go and the, it demands a lot out of you because you really need to work at your maximum efficiency because there are so many things happening all around there are procedures to be done in the flight there are a lot of parameters to be monitored like you know there is speed there is altitude you have to maintain the aircraft in three dimensions you need the thrust as well as if in case you know the etc calls then cabin crew is there so you need to make sure that everything is under your control and the it shouldn't happen that the aircraft is flying you but you should fly the plane you should be 10 steps ahead of yeah, what ahead aircraft of is that. so it's extremely important that you are really there as alert and as you know charged up as possible yes you need yes. to be like attentive because if you are tired and if there's any emergency or something like that it won't be like one cannot take proper action yeah by by the means of ahead of the aircraft is i mean what our instructors uh, have taught us and used to teach us being ahead of the aircraft is basically when you are like on a takeoff yes you are present with the takeoff okay but then you are thinking about the climb you are thinking in case an engine quits okay basically it's not on active mind but you know it what has yes, to be yes, done yes, yes, right yes. 500 feet you know you are going to f- as now the tower is going to tell you to switch over to departure right so you correct. have the secondary correct, frequency correct, already correct. set in which correct, you'll correct, just correct, correct, by correct. a press of a button right. switch to the right, departure right, as right, soon right. as the tower correct, instructs correct, you correct. to yep so, so it's basically the occupational enjoyment is what uh, brings the best so called work life balance i believe like honestly what i work at i i enjoy so yeah so so my thought about work life balance as i mentioned i honestly enjoy doing work i love working right uh, as even you do somehow that that work ethic is is there 
So I've seen you work like when we were flying, right? Yes, you would study along with that. You would do these vlogs when actually you s just started it, right? I had interest in photography and everything mm, and, yes. and we just chilled up on, on that. Like that's, that's how we started actually communicating a lot, right? <laughs> so you would study, you would fly and in the remaining time you would research and, and learn about photography and editing and, and all of those things and then yes. post YouTube videos and, and everything. Obviously within within the legal uh, parameters and not doing anything crazy at all. So basically I believe the work-life balance is um, feeling the void, right? And if you fill that void with work, you enjoy. Yes, you are enjoying it, right? Yes, so that's what that's what I used to feel when I was in the states. Like initially, when we started the application for the flight school, there wasn't any concrete information regarding how to apply or what to do, like what to expect when we reach the states and stuff. So in the back of my mind, when I was going for my training, I had like I want to uh, create something which can bridge this gap, like what situation or what problems I have faced. The other persons who are coming for their training they should not face the same problems so uh, initially i focused on my training and it was wonderful i never felt like i'm going to a flight school to learn these things it was everything was so so like fluent and everything was so like it, it was like a dream like you Correct. are living the dream sort of thing and once uh, i learned i got my private pilot license i knew how, how knew about the knowledge yeah, certain and stuff. achievement though yes. the very basic level that yes. like when we just got private pilot license it was so yeah. we we got that and then i was confident that i could study and i had like few couple of hours left in a day so I used that time to learn editing and uh, I remember I had an iPhone 7 and I Correct. shot my first video on uh, that phone and uh, my f I, I did not even had a laptop back then but mm -hmm. one of my friend had a gaming laptop. So I just borrowed his laptop and used my iPhone and made the first video and learned the basic editing. Correct. And shout out to that video. Great, great. That's, <laughs> so, amazing. that's so, amazing. So that's that's the story, like how I started with my first video. And when I made the first video, I got a great response to that video. Correct. And uh, meanwhile, when I was making video, I started enjoying it. Like I would watch the same video 10 to 15 times and never get bored about it. Correct. Okay. So when you love the work you're doing you don't feel like working for some people editing video would be uh like a forcing task. them yeah, yeah a task or something but for me it never felt like it yeah okay Sim sim similar with flying and similar with working out so when i go to work out to a gym uh, i just go there and love it it automatically happens i don't have to push myself for it Got okay it. i i make time for what i love right so flying is there like making videos, making content and then walking out, keeping like myself fit. So it everything happens automatically. So if you do what you love, like your life would be amazing. Definitely. Correct. Do what you love, love what, what you, you do. do. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> make sure what you love and what you do both pay you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. That's because very well because said. yeah, you can you can uh, do what you mm. love. Okay. And love what you do and uh, if you're um, what say if you're not getting paid then who's, yeah, who's gonna exactly pay the bills who's gonna right, pay the bills right, right? right, right. so that's Definitely. that's very important uh she is doing it really well okay oh she thank you loves flying she loves teaching students and yes uh, yes yes she's really good at it <laughs> thank you thank you i hope you loved watching this video and if you have any any topics or suggestions on which we should make another podcast then please do comment on this video below thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one thank you everyone for watching see you in the next one thank you everyone for watching and uh, basically this video covered something that is occupational enjoyment as a pilot because 
pilot career and flying uh, all of these things are really demanding rosters are challenging i see her uh, rosters and she has never said one single word about it she is welcoming it every single day so in order to have that approach towards your career and in order to grow in that career that approach is really important and that approach is only existent when you enjoy what you work for right and she is doing that so make sure to take that becoming a pilot step when you have readiness to accept the shortcomings in a welcoming way um yeah that's that's pretty much i have and uh, thank you for watching uh, we'll see you in the next video hopefully in the next video we'll have someone else on this podcast as well it's amazing uh, having these conversations there is no structured way in these communications we just go at conversations and uh, see where the conversation takes us so thank you thank you for joining us on this conversation it was amazing have an awesome day ahead night ahead whatever bye bye Snow binds the fingers made